Hello everyone. Welcome to Static GK quiz number 67. This video is aimed to help you with your central and state government job examinations. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Which among the following is a correct feature of the perpetual bond? Perpetual bonds do not have any maturity dates and hence are perpetual since they never redeem such debt instruments give the issuers the comfort that equity capital offers in their capital base. Hence, treated as equity by issuers, particularly the banks. Even regulators allow them to treat such bonds as a part of the bank's tier 1 capital, which traditionally comprises equity instruments. But on the flip side, unlike equity, they have to be serviced perpetually by way of paying interest to subscribers of such bond. Where is the headquarters of the North East Zone Cultural Centre located? There are seven zonal cultural centres functioning as autonomous bodies under the Ministry of Culture. They were set up in 1985 to 1986. A provision of Rs 2,159 lakhs was made for them in 2009 and 10. The seven centres and their headquarters are as follows. North Central Zone Cultural Centre is Allahabad. North Zone Cultural Centre is Patiala. West Zone Cultural Centre is Udaipur. North East Zone Cultural Centre is Dimapur. Eastern Zone Cultural Center is Kolkata. South Zone Cultural Center is Thanjavur. South Central Zone Cultural Center is Nagpur. Who among the following heads the Genetic Engineering Approvals Committee or GEAC in India? In this list, none of them hold it. The Genetic Engineering Approvals Committee is headed by a secretary level officer in the Ministry of Environment and Forests. Which among the following has the power to legislate on the matters which are neither in the union list, nor in the state list, nor in the concurrent list of the Constitution of India? So the correct answer is Parliament. The subjects which are not enlisted in union, state or concurrent list are called residuary subjects. The power to legislate on residuary subjects lies within the Parliament. Which among the following would most likely follow if the Reserve Bank of India affects selling of securities? In such cases, the most likely outcome is the cash resources at the disposal of the commercial banks will get diminished. Which among the following is the correct definition of fiduciary issue of note? The fiduciary issue is a part of the issue of notes and coins that is not backed by gold. All notes today are fiduciary. So the correct answer is the issue of currency notes without metallic backing. Which among the following countries is currently the biggest supplier of crude oil to India? The correct answer is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia replaced Iraq as top oil supplier to India in July of this year after a gap of more than a year according to data from industry and shipping sources as a higher intake of Iranian oil ahead of US sanctions altered trade routes. The goods which are collectively consumed by the community are called public goods. Consumer goods on the other hand are goods bought and used by consumers rather than by manufacturers for producing other goods. Also in economics, a durable good or a hard good is a good that does not quickly wear out, whereas a non-durable good or soft good is the exact opposite. In which five-year plan, self-reliance as an object of planning was emphasized? The correct answer is fourth five-year plan. So this plan was in action between 1969 and 1974. There were two main objectives that is growth with stability and progressive achievement of self-reliance. During this plan, the slogan of Garibi Hatao was given during the 1971 elections by Indira Gandhi, 
This plan failed and could achieve growth rate of only 3.3%, whereas the target was 5.7%. The portion of total deposits of a commercial bank which it has to keep with itself in form of liquid assets is called statutory liquidity ratio. Whereas the cash reserve ratio refers to a certain percentage of total deposits the commercial banks are required to maintain in the form of cash reserve with the central bank. In India's case, that's RBI. Statutory liquidity ratio is the Indian government term for the reserve requirement that the commercial banks in India are required to maintain in the form of cash, gold reserves and government approved securities before providing credit to the customers. That's all for today's quiz. Until the next video, goodbye.